Nerd Boxers to another episode of the Streaming News, only we're not talking about what's coming out, we're talking about hidden gems. And on this episode, we are talking about 15 hidden gems that are on Shutter that you should check out. And you'll get a couple of different opinions on those type of movies, because not every horror fan is the same. There are people that are like me, who like Malignant and the new Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and then there's Jen, who does it. It's good to have a difference of opinions in horror movies, so we're going to jump into that in just a second. But before we do that, remember, it is the quest for 5,000 subscribers. And when we hit 5,000 subscribers, you get to win this box of cereal that you cannot get here in the United States because it is a UK limited release. And also, it has Matthew Lillard and David Arquette's signature on it. So you're definitely not getting that here. And along the way, on that quest of 5,000 subscribers, as we get 100 likes and 100 comments per video, what we're going to do is we're going to choose a subscriber from that list of comments, and we're going to give away some prizes. And it's movie theater swag. So there are posters, there's coloring books, there's comic books, there's pins, oh my, and you have a chance to get one of those. So help us reach 5,000 subscribers, because we would appreciate it. So let's jump into that list. My first one is 30 Miles From Nowhere. It's five college friends who return to rural Wisconsin, and I mean rural, like in the middle of nowhere, <laughs> for their estranged friend's funeral. What begins as an uneasy reunion becomes a terrifying fight for survival. I do not remember watching this movie one bit. So I don't know if that's a good thing, or a bad thing, or if I fell asleep. Is this a thriller, suspense? There is some thriller stuff in there, just as far as like some of the creep factor that happens, like bugs or people kind of like imagining something being there that isn't. I can't say too much because it'll give it away. That's what makes it hard. Let's just say that them going to like their estranged friend's funeral is not exactly what the movie is. <laughs> My next pick is Superhost. So with their follower count dwindling, travel vloggers Teddy and Claire pivot to creating viral content around their most recent Superhost, Rebecca, who wants more from the duo than a great review. If you are a fan of the movie Creep 1 and 2, this takes a lot of elements from the movie because the super host is pretty damn creepy. This is one of the reasons I don't use Airbnb because I just don't, I don't know you, I don't trust you. I'm just gonna go to a hotel chain. I, I don't want the, I don't want the fact that these people have a key that can just come in anytime when you're renting that space. I'm not comfortable with that. And Rebecca definitely makes me very uncomfortable with that whole thing. I'll tell you this though, you have to, when you watch this movie, you have to choose the side that you're on because the vloggers may have deserved it. Well, I was just gonna say, Teddy and Claire are not exactly innocent in what they do. They <clears throat> essentially try to ruin ratings for these Airbnb hosts or these super hosts. They try to ruin it for likes and that's, Kind of a dick move. <laughs> this came over to us as a recommendation. Mm -hmm. I did stay awake for the whole entire movie. So if you like the movie Creep or Creep 2, you'll definitely like this movie. My next one is The Taking of Deborah Logan. There's a team of students who want to create a documentary about Deborah Logan, an elderly woman who has Alzheimer's disease. As the film crew records her daily life, Deborah starts to exhibit increasingly bizarre actions that her personal physician states are normal for someone with an aggressive form of Alzheimer's. However, the cameraman begins to notice that her actions defy normal explanations and expresses concern that something supernatural is possibly occurring. I still find the trailer more creepy than the entire movie. I don't know, that's just me. but. <laughs> It's a it's a decent movie. I think it's on a level of like the visit. Mm -hmm. So it yeah. has that slow burn and it leads you up to the ending. And then there are some shocking things that are that happen in the movie. Yeah. And you see it in the trailer, right? It's not a spoiler, but she's trying to swallow a kid. 
Yeah, that's definitely creepy. That's what drew me <laughs> into watching the movie. And made me watch the movie a second time. Now, this next one that you have on there is a newer one. It is. The Twin. And it stars Teresa Palmer, who was in movies like Lights Out, among others. She's really kind of getting known in, in the horror genre, I believe. In the aftermath of a tragic accident that killed their son, Rachel and Anthony, decide to move to the other side of the world and focus on their surviving son, Elliot. What begins as a time of healing and isolation in the Scandinavian countryside turns into a desperate battle for the very soul of their child as an entity claiming to be his dead twin brother takes over. Sounds creepy. Yeah, but this one all is not what it seems to be with this movie and you really don't, even though it starts to, starts to unravel, you don't really find out until the very end of the movie what the twist is. This is superbly acted because yes. the grief that the actress, which I forget the name. Teresa Palmer. Yes. Went through and displayed in the film was, it was moving. It was very believable. As a mom myself, I could definitely feel for her and how she dealt with it. And I would think that with twins, it would be especially hard because now you've still got this person that looks like the person who's dead, but it's not that person. Mm -hmm. So, and it's just a constant reminder. Yep. With this movie, you can't say, oh, if you like this movie, you're going to like this <clears> one. <throat> because if you're familiar with the other movie that I would mention, then you're going to be like, damn it. Why did you have to go and say that? Yeah. So you can't say what it's like, but it is a good slow burn. It's got a good payoff. Definitely check it out. My last one is C for me. When a blind former skier, Sophie, cat sits in a secluded mansion, three thieves invade for the hidden safe. Sophie's only defense is an army veteran, Kelly, who she dials on an app called C for me so that Sophie can get Kelly's help to defend herself against the invaders and try to survive. And what, I, what was really unique about this is that the actor who plays Sophie really is blind. Not completely, but her sight is very, very minimal. So the this was all very real for her. And I think she did an exceptional job. Mm -hmm. This also came to us on recommendation from Kitten Coates himself. When yes, we did. talked to him, he's in the film. Where he shows up, we will not tell you. It's got a lot of great suspense, right? Mm -hmm. So if you like movies like Hush and you liked Mute Witness, then this is definitely one that you're going to want to check out. I enjoyed it. It may be my one of my favorites on this of your picks. Let us know what you think of Jen's picks, and then we'll dive into my picks. My first pick is not only a hidden gem, but it is a classic slasher film that's kind of been forgotten about it. Nobody really ever talks about it. And it's actually one of the first slasher films that I saw because back in the day when we only had five channels, this <laughs> my pick is starring Jamie Lee Curtis, who was the budding scream queen back then with Halloween, Terror Train, and this movie, which is Prom Night. And it also had Leslie Nielsen from the Naked Gun films. He appeared in some of the scary movie films. And then of course, one of my favorites, Dracula Dead and Loving It. You have a group of kids that are playing hide and seek that goes wrong because it turns into almost like a, the game the killer or the murderer. What happens though is there's a tragic accident. One of the kids falls from two stories up through a plate glass window and she passes away. Now over the course of years she's forgotten about. The kids that were playing the game moved on with their lives but there is one person that has it moved on. And as they're preparing for their graduation and of course, prom night, somebody is calling them with harassing messages. Similar to Scream. So if you like Scream, you're gonna like this. A little bit closer to Black Christmas, the original. Good mesh of the two. One by one, they all start dying off and nobody can figure it out until the ending. Which for me, when I saw the ending as a kid, I was like, oh, that's sad. <laughs> I felt bad for the person. <laughs> I did. 
So that's my uh, first hidden gem on there. I didn't watch this till I was an adult, and I watched it with you, so I didn't have the same reaction. Though I did like the movie. Definitely go check that out. So if you haven't seen Prom Night, go watch this. If you don't have Shudder and you're looking for Prom Night, make sure it's not the new one, because that is absolute trash. You want to watch this one. And it did spawn off two sequels, not related to this. It's about ghosts. So you don't have to watch those either. Just watch this one and you're good. Let's go into the creature feature type of flicks. If you're a Lovecraftian film lover, if you like Dagon, if you like movies like The Thing, if you like the Reanimator series, then this is one for you. This is The Void. And it kind of reminds me of John Carpenter mixed with a little Stuart Gordon, a local cop that stumbles across a guy crawling in onto the roadside covered in blood. He takes that guy, he goes to the hospital, and little that he knows, the people that were stalking that person end up finding their way to the hospital, and they're going to finish the job that they started. Meanwhile, outside of the hospital, we have a bunch of people dressed in white robes and hoods, not the Ku Klux Klan, somebody else, that surround the hospital and as the tension begins to rise within the hospital there's a creature that begins to stalk everybody that is inside i love this movie it's got a lot of good gore to it it's got some good story to it it's got a good ending it's got a little bit of everything now is it an amazing film no but if you like gore if you want to see some good suspense and some thrillers, little zombiness tossed in there, this is definitely one that you want to check out. And that's her reaction because she did not like it. Didn't. Hated it. <laughs> now this next one may have spoiled The Strangers for us. This is a French-Romanian film. It is called Them. This is not the femme from the 1930s about the big giant ants. This is the femme where you have a couple that is going away to a vacation home when somebody arrives knocking on their door. Because that's never not creepy. Really goes over the first and second act because you don't know where these people are. And they're just, they're, it's a cat and mouse game. The suspense is great and you, it's got you hooked because you don't know what the heck is going to happen. Because anybody, I think, in these type of films, the way it's laid out, is like, anybody could die, pretty much. There's no big name actor or actress in this. You don't see who the killers are or killer is. And then you're like, oh boy, what's going to happen? And then the ending is pretty shocking. Yeah. So, if you like Strangers, if you like Strangers Pray at Night, again, another one, like, if you like Hush, and you want to have that suspense and that tension build up throughout the film, do watch this one here. It is subtitled, but there's not that much talking in the film. Now my next pick is from the director that brought you The Girl on the Third Floor, Travis Stevens. He now brings us Jacob's Wife. This is one of our first movies that we've reviewed on the channel. It is a Shudder original. We have Barbara Crampton, and she is a church wife. But she's quiet and she's an obedient wife. That's the best way I can sum it up. When an old flame comes back into town, it's like, hmm, she kind of decides to get loose. And if you're religious, because somebody left us a nasty religious comment on this video when we dropped the re review. If you're religious, then you're going to say what she gets is what she deserves. Because when they go to fool around, they run into the master who is a vampire that looks a lot like Nosferatu. It's also played by the actress who plays the nun. And she is embraced. That's a vampire term, if you don't know. And she is turned into a vampire. But it's not like any traditional vampire. It's like, ah, I bit you. Now you're a vampire. It's the slow turn into a vampire. So she is going through urges and changes that kind of spook our husband a little bit because she's becoming more sensual and she's becoming more empowered in the film, which is really cool to see, right? Mm -hmm. She goes from this little quiet, obedient wife to like, hey, I'm in charge and this is what I want to do. 
and it's funny. It's a funny horror movie, so if you like Return of the Living Dead, Night of the Creeps, this is definitely a film to check out. You're going to enjoy it. Grab your popcorn, kick back, and enjoy the film. Yeah, and I mean, the changes are, are subtle. Like, first, you know, it's like she does her hair different. She wears red lipstick instead of something a little more toned down. So it is very gradual. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so effed up! That looks heavy. Second foreign film on my list is going to be One Missed Call. It is not the American version. This is the original Japanese version. This is from Takashi Miike, and he is a well-renowned Japanese horror director. He has done some amazing films, and this is toned down from what he usually puts out. He is usually a director that pushes everything to the goriest level that it makes you almost want to turn off the films. Each of the Killer, which I'm surprised that you like that film, but it's over the top. And he also had a movie, well, a short movie that was banned on Showtime as part of the Master of Horror series because it was too graphic. This film is not that way. We have a young girl that is hanging out with her friend one night and her friend gets a phone call and she doesn't answer it because the number is her own. Now, that may not sound weird because I get called from my own phone occasionally because of telemarketers, which is really weird. But in this case, there's a voicemail that's left. She checks the voicemail and it's the two girls. They're arguing and then it's followed by a scream and it's ultimately her death. A couple days later, the scenario plays out. Only now, after this person, her friend dies, each of her friends slowly start to die because they're receiving a phone call or a video message or an image showing what is going to happen to them in their death. And I'll tell you, the ringtone for this movie is creepy. Very creepy. It creeps me out. And there's not that many things that creep me out, but the ringtone for this is so creepy. I actually had it on my phone for a long time. And it used to creep out the kids, if you remember. Yeah, I don't know why you had that as your ringtone since you're so creeped out by it. I would not have it as my ringtone. <laughs> it's, sometimes it's good to be scared. No, I'm good. So definitely check out this movie. It is Japanese, so there is subtitles, but it is one of the ones that came out during the whole Asian horror boom. That's really, really good. And it's a trilogy. So the other two are very good as well. That brings us to our five. And the first one is Tragedy Girls. This one may be the best film on this list. It's perfectly crafted horror comedy, and it's on the level of American Psycho. When a local serial killer is caught by two high school girls, yes, high school girls, Sadie and Michaela, he soon learns that it's not by accident, and they want to leave their own legacy as serial killers while becoming internet famous for reporting on the murders. It's all about the likes. Right, so American Psycho dealt with the yuppies, and this film deals with modern day culture. So it is, in my opinion, the perfect film since American Psycho. Not that many people talk about it, they should. This would be one of those movies like Behind the Mask, or Pool Hall Junkies, or Boondock Saints that I would feel comfortable recommending to every single person, and I know they would come back and like it. I liked it. Right from the jump, I think that it was the whole thing was just written really well. I like the idea of it, right? They want to be like TikTok famous. So what do they do? They actually kidnap a serial killer. Mm -hmm. The next one on our list is about a serial killer, Clove Hitch Killer. Essentially, it's inspired by the BTK killer. You have the all-American nuclear family. It's the 4.5 in the household. So that means two parents, two kids, and a, and a dog or a half a kid. However, they factored that in back in the day, before our time, I don't know. The father is a stand-up guy. He's a role model in the community. He goes to church. He's a Boy Scout leader. And uh, one day, his son finds something a little naughty, naughty, kinky, kinky in his dad's car, which kind of leads him to do some digging. And you never dig in your parents' closets or under their bed. 
Never. Never. No. Most times you're not going to find what this kid found, but... <laughs> yes, not in, not in a movie and not in real life because there's some scary things that are in your parents' drawers. There is. So the discovery is that maybe his dad is a serial killer that has been dormant for a decade or two. And uh, his dad gets rid of the evidence because he says, hey, it's not mine. And that causes him to start to have those urges because his trophies are gone. Now he needs new ones. Yes. And how this movie plays out is something to see. It's going to make you feel a little dirty, especially towards the end, but it's definitely one to watch. Yeah, it's starring Dylan McDermott. He and did an amazing he, job. He did. His Just his whole look and demeanor screams like pedophile Boy Scout leader when you look at him. Mm -hmm. He did an excellent job. He was definitely creepy and made me feel very dirty. Yep, I'm not normally a fan of his, but he knocked it out of the ballpark on this. I'm not a fan of him. He's really good. And you did like his role in Law & Order SVU. He's a bad guy. Bad guys are good. The next film on our list for you Walking Dead fans and Samara Weavy fans is Mayhem. Steven Yeun is trapped in an office complex with a virus quickly spreading through it and making people succumb to their inner worst impulses. Whether that means like just stripping naked or having sex with random people or killing someone or whatever. It, yeah, you name it, they do it. This lives up to its title. It does. Steven plays Derek Cho, who's fired from his job, which also features Samara Weaving, a pissed off client for his firm that he's been fired from. So the two of them team up and fight their way to the top floor to confront the firm's executives and get some answers. This movie is as brutal as it is fun. It's not only worth the watch, but it's worth owning and put, putting in your yearly rotation. Yes, it's like a video game, right? They have to start on the first floor and work their way all the way up to the top level, going through obstacles of crazy-ass people. There's carnage. It is brutal and a little gory in some scenes, Yeah. but it is definitely one to watch. 1BR. Oh, you have Sarah, who is moving into an apartment complex in California. And her neighbors are a little weird, but... It's California. Yeah, it's a new start for her. So she is getting situated in her apartment. She's sort of getting to know some of her neighbors. And it um, turns out that her neighbors are a bunch of cult members. And they're looking to pair Sarah up to do certain things. And because she does not want to comply, they turn to... A little bit of a psychological game and torture. It's good suspense. It's definitely worth watching. It kept my interest because I didn't really like a lot of the characters, but I like yeah. the film and I like the story. I guess you can say that this movie was, for me, the equivalent of somebody reading a book in a page turn. Because mm -hmm. I had to see, hey, what happens next? What happens next? It's different also just worth mentioning since we didn't mention this to a friend of ours if you're an animal lover particularly cats there is a scene i apologize now i don't remember that <laughs> i probably blocked it out and our last pick again this is not in any single order because we said tragedy girls will probably be number one on the list both of our list i would think yeah is anything for Jackson. After the death of their grandson Jackson, Audrey and Dr. Henry kidnap one of Dr. Henry's pregnant patients with the intention of performing a reverse exorcism and resurrecting Jackson in her unborn child. What could go wrong, right? Yeah. <laughs> a reverse exorcism. When does an exorcism ever go right? Yeah. And now you're doing a reverse exorcism. Seems easy enough. Sounds like a new trend. Yeah, probably. It doesn't go well. <laughs> don't do a reverse exorcism. Don't do an exorcism. But don't do a reverse exorcism. Now, for you, not being a believer of religious things, I was actually surprised that you liked this film. Because I really liked the writing and I thought the acting was phenomenal. I really think that this, this couple did an amazing job mm -hmm. in... You could just feel their grief in, in losing their grandson mm -hmm. and 
and how they just really, really wanted to get that back. It was their only grandchild. I believe he was the son of their only child. So, I mean, that's that's a difficult thing. So, I mean, I could really feel for yeah. them. Yeah, and this movie has, like, a mixture of horror and some comedy elements in it. Yeah. Because there are some funny scenes in this movie. Yeah. Which is very good tension breakers to break mm -hmm. up the film as you're going yeah. along. So, it is a good one to watch. It has good suspense. It's another page turner of a film that you're just going to want to see what happens throughout it so yeah that's our picks so you there you have it 15 hidden gems on shutter have you seen any of these films what films that are hidden gems that you have found on shutter that maybe we should watch and prepare in a future video so let us know by leaving your comments down below what movies that you've seen on this list did you agree with our choices what movies do you recommend that are hidden gems on Shutter? Because a lot of people are getting ready for Halloween. And of course, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. And until the next, see ya. See ya.